Hey guys, today I'm going to be unboxing the Hobby Star Harut Final Battle version. So yes, this is a third-party kit, a bootleg kit sort of technically, uh, just by the fact that it's a bootleg of intellectual property that belongs to Bandai. The actual kit, though, is not, I guess, a totally a bootleg because it, this includes parts that Bandai just doesn't make, uh, so that's why it's okay for me. Uh, but, you know, that may not be okay for you. If you're the kind of person that doesn't like this sort of thing, then uh, you can just stop watching the video. It's all good. It's okay. I don't mind. Uh, but if you are interested in seeing what this is like, then uh, look on, because here we're looking at the box, and I just gotta say, the box art is pretty terrible. The box, I mean, the artwork is fine, but actually, like, the quality of the image, like, the image quality is, like, very low, and, like, they, like, blew it up to the size, and it's really obvious that it's just not the right quality image for this big of a box, so, yeah. But, I mean, that's just the box, so it's not really a big deal. Uh, just the front image here, just the image quality is pretty shitty, but here we can see Hong Kong Special. I don't really know what that's all about anyway. I don't know if that has any sort of meaning at all, but just here we can see the box art, and then here at the bottom, uh, Hobby Star is the company that this is made by. Uh, I am not familiar with anything else that they've made in the past, but here you can see uh, there's some stuff there in English. Not sure about the quality of that English either, but and then here again you can see some of that box art, yeah, but uh, let's get around here to the side. Uh, there's that English there again, if you want to pause the video, I guess you could probably read that. Uh, and then here's what this is going to look like, front and rear, and then in the mobile armor mode, uh, transformed. I guess I'll transform it for the review for you guys, but I'm not really interested, I'm just interested in this form. I like this design just because of this these huge leg things going on there, it's pretty cool. Another thing that this has... Uh, it has the Marut mode. I'm actually not too really familiar with what that is, but uh, I guess it has an alternate head, this normal head, and then this opened up head. Uh, I like that one because, like, the four eyes, it has a sort of, like, Evangelion sort of feel in that way. We have some different hand options. Looks like um, maybe holding hands, closed fists, and open hands. So that's pretty cool. It has some other gimmicks uh, with these Gen uh, scissor bits being able to store, at least you can store maybe well, a couple of them in the leg parts here or in those kind of container parts. But then you have a bunch of them, I'm not actually sure, uh, it says you get 10 of them. 10 of those little scissor bits. Uh, and then you can put uh, LEDs in the GN drives, but it says not including the lighting. So it doesn't include the LEDs, but I guess maybe it's, uh, if you buy like a third party LED set or something, you can put those in there. Uh, I guess it's probably fitted, probably made to fit the uh, Bandai LED units, but I don't know, we'll see. Uh, then it has the rifles. Again, not really too big of a fan of those rifle designs. They're kind of silly. But uh, it's the main mobile suit that I like in this case. So we get that off and get this opened up. And let's get a look at what we got in here. All right, we got some gray parts here and some black parts. Very large square runners there, some polycaps as well bunch of orange parts. Uh, first impression of the quality, I can see there's a lot of sinking in the plastic, which again is relatively normal for a third party kit. The panel lines are quite wide, which again is also pretty usual for a third party kit. Uh, just some more smaller parts here, some white parts, white parts, some clear green parts, some of the larger orange parts. Uh, some more gray and black parts here, some clear for the base, which is pretty cool. Uh, some clear rods, you have a bunch of these, these clear rods that you can use for the uh, scissor bits. And, ah, this is actually something else, uh, let's just put that off to the side. That's uh, something else I got from Samuel Dika, I'll get back to that, I don't think I have to do a separate video or something for that. Anyway, so it looks like we've got 10 of these clear rods. Then we've got some decals here. So, let's see. This decal sheet is all this kind of like orange digital camo kind of thing going on here for this. 
and it says like GN sword rifle, some things specific for the Harut. I don't know, I maybe will, I guess we'll use a couple of these, but it's not really for me, so I probably won't use all of them. But uh, we do have those. Then in this other bag, it looks like we have a sheet of foil stickers, which look pretty terrible. Uh, don't know if these are going to be worth anything, but I'll maybe try them on. I can see we have a bunch for the eyes, green eyes, and a whole bunch of these red eyes, and then some of these for going inside the uh, GN condensers, and then a whole bunch of these like silver ones, I'm guessing, are maybe going underneath clear parts or something. Not too sure, but uh, we'll see how the build goes, but just first initial thoughts about that quality is they seem pretty bad, but we'll see. Uh, then the water slides that are included in this bag are just kind of regular water slide markings, so like a whole bunch of like lining and just caution markings and Trans Am and GN, uh, just things, logos and stuff like that, I'm not sure. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. But, uh, so a whole bunch of, plenty of water slides for this kit. Alright, so then getting into the manual, here we have the same box art, uh, which is looking a little bit better now that it's scaled down. Uh, but then here on the back, again, same kind of stuff we saw on the outside of the box. So nothing really too much there. Inside here we do have a parts list, uh, which is does include a couple of x off parts, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I think, though I'm not sure, I would have to check, I think that some of the parts of the Gundam itself are copied from the Bandai HG kit, but I'm not too sure. I don't, I'm not sure if this is completely original or not. So, I don't know, I'd have to check the manual for that kit. I obviously don't have it. Um, then, alright, so here's the construction, starting off with the head, and then torso, and then arms. I guess the left arm, right arm. Then, uh, what is this, the legs? So building up the legs, you can see it's just kind of this big, huge mass thing. So if you're wondering if you can build just the regular legs, it doesn't look like it. So it looks like you have to build the legs like this, with these big, huge things. Uh, so then we're building those up, and then the waist unit, and then we're building the lower body, and then putting the upper body on that. Uh, and then this is for the backpack. And all of that, the big, huge uh, kind of binder things on the backpack as well. Uh, then it looks like you can store maybe three, three of those little scissor bits. You can like stick them together and then stick them into like the container in the back, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Some stickers going on there. So here we can see where some of those stickers are going. Some of those silver stickers are just going straight onto this uh, part, which I'm guessing is not going to work well. So we'll have to see. Anyway, and then sticking these onto the backpack. And then just building up the weapons and the base and all of that. And then about the transformation here. Transforming into that mobile armor mode. Which is not a bad mobile armor mode, I just prefer in the Gundam form. Anyway, and then here's where all the stickers and all the markings, I should say, all the water side markings are going to be going on here. It doesn't give you any sort of details about where you're supposed to stick on those uh, camo, like the digital camo markings. I guess those are just kind of free to just put on wherever you want. So anyway, alright, let's get a look at the runners. Okay, so first up is those polycaps. We do have uh, some of them, quite a lot of them here, all just molded in standard gray. These all look like... This actually looks like the exact polycap runner that we get in a lot of recent high-grade kits, especially like the Iron Blood Orphans kits, except that it's larger. It's like just blown up in scale, which is kind of funny, and it's like the exact same polycaps. Uh, this one is just another polycap runner, but it's like a lot of the same kind of ones. It's all the same kind of shapes that we normally see from Bandai kits, uh, but just the layout's a little bit different. I just want to show these to you guys here first because these two little tiny orders don't have any sort of markings on them because they're just one piece each. In this dark blue color we have this piece which is like for the faceplate kind of mask and then we have this clear purple part there for like the visor on that too so kind of funny we just got these little guys here. So here we got runner A and just a few white parts here. We actually have two of this runner and yeah the it seems like not really the best in terms of quality, but it's not bad either. We'll have to see how the fit is, because the fit is really kind of the most important thing. The actual surface quality and all of that can be sanded and everything. This kit is definitely going to take some sanding. Uh, the plastic feels a little bit soft, and uh, you can see, but the details on there look relatively sharp, so that should be okay. Uh, just giving everything a good sanding will definitely help. Then we have runner A1, which again is just more white parts, and here you can see uh, I'll give you a, maybe a closer up look at some parts here there for the head and then the face, like top of the head 
and faceplate there in white. So you can see some of those details on there and then all the hand covers, of course. And the runner A2 is another kind of oddly shaped runner. Uh, we have runner A2, and then we have another runner A2, which is the same, except that this one here has the uh, part, there's another part for the head, so I'm guessing we're going to build the two heads. Uh, we have parts for making the two heads separately. Anyway, all this other stuff down here, though, is just copied from that runner. And just by the way, concerning these GN drives here, they do look to be the size that will fit the Bandai LED, un LED units, or if you have third-party LED units as well that are of the same size, those should be able to fit into these GN drives, it looks like. Then we've got runner B, which is a real big one here, all our orange parts, so parts for the weapons and everywhere else. And we do also have a runner, a second runner B, which is just a copy of this section here. So again, just to give you, now that the parts aren't white, you can actually see the details a little bit better. Give you a look at some of these details. So you can see that the detail quality is pretty sharp, but uh, the panel lines are quite wide, which may or may not be to your liking. Personally, I don't really like, uh, in a lot of third party kits, they make the panel lines really too wide, personally, for my taste. But it's not bad, and like here's parts for the chest there as well. So, yeah, overall, we're looking pretty good. Then we got runner C, which is just a few more of these large orange parts. And then runner C1, which is our yellow parts. So, just a few of these on here, obviously, parts for the head. So, this looks like, yeah, the parts to make a couple of different heads there. And then we also have runner C2. So, we have C, C1, and C2. So here's some red parts here, a couple of red parts there, I think those are like for the body, and then a couple of red parts here for the face. This red plastic quality definitely looks lower, and red plastic usually is, from my experience, from Chinese kits, but uh, anyway, there's that. Then we got runner D, which is another really big runner, some smaller kind of joint parts, and then some larger parts for, I think those are for like the binders and the backpack, I believe, and then these are also just center backpack parts there as well. Then we got runner E, which is some more joint parts, weapon parts, and then uh, hands here. You can see all the hands molded on this runner. Uh, and then we also have a second runner E, which is just of this section of the runner there, minus the hands. Then runner E1, just more gray parts, larger gray parts here in this case. And then we do have a second runner E1 as well. And then runner F is a very large, big square black runner here with a lot of parts for kind of everywhere. It looks like you can see torso parts as well as parts for the backpack and uh, big parts here and there and everywhere, so a whole bunch of black parts here on our F. Then we have our XC, which is our clear green parts, so obviously a whole bunch of these, and uh, for like inside the GN drives, GN condensers, and then for the scissor bits, uh, and then the kind of main sword rifle. Uh, this clear green looks alright, it's not really great though, but even Bandai's clear green doesn't look all that good for me personally in my point of view. And a usually, like, Chinese third-party kits, usually their clear green doesn't really look that good either. Uh, I guess clear green is just kind of a maybe more difficult one to do. But anyway, we do have two of this XE, XC runner. And the last thing here is just some plain clear parts for the base. And you can see, I think this is actually for, like, the kind of cockpit hatch of the backpack there as well. So we have this runner here and then this one here for... The base parts, I believe this is like the main base, then you can use this for like a secondary kind of base, I believe, or something, or they go together, I'm not actually too sure, oh, actually they do go together like that, I guess that one goes inside there. But uh, anyway, here's all the parts for the clear base, and that's it. So that's it for unboxing the Harut Final Battle version. Yeah, uh, looks like an interesting kit, and it's a third party kit, so the quality is not going to be as good as Bandai kits, but on the opposite side, it's something that Bandai just doesn't make. So if you wanted a Final Battle Harut, then uh, this is what you gotta go with. Uh, I, yeah, like I said, not really the biggest 00 fan myself personally, and most of the designs aren't really all that appealing for me. The regular Harut is okay, but this particular design is something that I really liked. And I was actually, for a long time, I was considering buying like just uh, the regular HG kit. I really wanted the legs though like these legs, and the regular HG kit doesn't have those. So I was kind of bummed about that, but I was really on the fence about buying the HG kit. I, th I looked at it a lot of, many times, I thought about it like, ah, oh, should I just buy it, should I buy it? Like, ah, oh, I really liked this version of it. And then finally I saw the uh, announcement of this third party kit, and I said, alright, nice, gonna give it a try. 
uh, just because uh, if there's any version of the Harut that I like the most, this is it. So I'll give it a go and I'll let you guys know what I think about it in the review. So thank you guys so much for watching this unboxing video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye!